Okay, let's talk a little bit about semiconductors. Semiconductors. And of course, the um, uh, classic example is silicon. And um, as you uh, no doubt know, or you could look up, uh, silicon has the um, atomic number of 14. And so it's got this electron configuration 1s2, 2s2. 2p6, so we've got 10 electrons there, um, <clears throat> and then we're going to move to the 3, uh, n equals 3 shell, 3s2, 3p2. Okay, so it actually looks like, uh, you know, very much like carbon, except for n equals 3 instead of n equals 2, and that makes sense. It's just one below carbon, uh, so so this is this is this is good, um, you know. I, I, Electron configuration is, in fact, dictating properties, which is what I've, uh, I, I always promise people. Um, so, so that's um, you know that's fantastic. These core ones look like neon. So those are the core electrons, tightly bound, and these are the valence ones. And then these become um, sp3 hybridized, three uh, states in uh, 3p, blended with that s, and we treat them all the same, and you end up with this octahedral, uh, correction, tetrahedral uh, arrangement in, in space of those four identical um, bonds. And, <clears throat> oh, anyway, all that um, leads us to uh, what did we have? We had we we could then um, look at the band uh, structure, band diagram for for silicon, and we got all those hybridized um, uh, hybridized orbitals there. And so these are this is the uh, filled um, valence band, and then we have this this uh, band gap. We got this valence band, and we have a uh, conduction band. And in order to get conduction, we need to promote an electron from the valence band across the band gap into the conduction band. All right, good. <clears throat> um, and so, okay, so that, that's a, that's a good. Um, look at the band structure. What about if we kind of look at a cartoon sketch of the crystal? I think it'll be a little bit easier, uh, perhaps, to visualize. Uh, but we'll show you know the same event that promotion of an electron up like this to give conductivity. And so if this is um, if this is silic silicon here, each of these little circles is meant to be silicon, and each silicon brings to the table those four valence electrons. So, you know, it's going to have four valence electrons like this. And of course, it uh, shares those covalently with the adjacent adjacent uh, silicons. And we get something that we could sketch like this. I mean, this is a two-dimensional representation, of course, but um, not, not bad. I mean, this is good enough for our uh, purposes. If this is what we're talking about, just these sp3 hybridized um, electrons yeah, that's kind of what it looks like I mean it's again two dimensions but it's it's good for our purposes and so then what happens is when we promote an electron from the uh, valence band into the conduction band we um, go like this so we promote it up and we could think of that you know, spatially as, as con freeing it up or, or in, the, in the model that we had from C of electrons in, in a metal, we're, we're moving that electron into the um, conduction band where it's free of the nuclei. So it's left behind a missing electron. Missing electron. Okay, so this missing electron is in a place where there would have been a negatively charged electron. Now remember, this electron is negatively charged. So th this is the absence of an electron, the absence of something you could call uh, you could call a hole. And in fact, that's often what we we do call this a hole. Um, and so the interesting thing is we've 
We've promoted an electron up into conduction. It's free to move, so now it can, you know, it can conduct um, through this uh, semiconductor. You know, in fact, this this model is not bad. You can see this electron moving. It might hit a nuclei. It might get some thermal vibrations there. Um, there could be a, you know, a grain band or any kind of scattering event that would interfere with the conductivity of that electron. And, but if the electron's moving this way, say towards a positive um, electrode, well, the the hole, which is Net um, the hole appears um, to be positive. It appears as if it's positive, and it's a little bit bizarre to think about. You know, this hole as being something that you know you might see moving, but that that we we could, with a little stretch of our imagination, imagine that that hole is something that's moving. So it's as if the hole is moving the other way, say towards the negative electrode. And so we get actually two, um, two element, two, two, uh, we call them charge carriers, two things that are carrying charge. This is carrying a positive charge and this is carrying a negative charge. The electron is carrying a negative charge. So there's actually in this example here where we've promoted an electron up and left behind a hole, we actually have two charge carriers, we say. There's two charge carriers. And this is actually called intrinsic semiconduction. Um, intrinsic, intrinsic semiconduction. And it's intrinsic because this is just the properties of the silicon on its own. We have its own electron promoted up. There's nothing external to this. It's all internal, or we say intrinsic, to this, uh, this material. And I'll, I'll differentiate that from what we'll cover in a moment, where we add some other impurities to this. And we dope it, it's called. But right now, this is intrinsic semiconduction. It's just the, the, the behavior of the uh, material, the, in this case, silicon, uh, on its own. It's got two charge carriers. So in fact, the conductivity, if we were to calculate the conductivity, would have to be calculated in terms of the two charge carriers. And the conductivity is um, given the, the symbol sigma. And it's going to be, um, you, you can kind of imagine, it should be the f a function of the number of electrons, okay, times whatever charge that electron is carrying, and I'm giving it the absolute value of the charge here, times how easily the electron can move. And so we have this, this uh, um, symbol here um, for the, um, this, is, this is new, uh, sub E, for the mobility of the electron. So how quickly is the electron moving? What charge is it carrying? And how many are there? But, that, but that's only for the electron. We need to also consider, and that's, you could say that's N sub E, we also need to consider the number of these, these holes, or the positive charges. <clears throat> In fact, actually, you know what, sorry, let me, um, let me clear and do, I'm going to leave this N for negative, and we're going to put P for positive. So that would be the number of positive charge carriers times their charge. But they're carrying just the absolute value of their charge is the same. And then times the mobility of those um, charge carriers. And I put subscript H because these are holes. So that's the mobility of a hole. And P is the number of um, of holes. And of course, number of electrons promoted is going to be um, actually the same, right, as the number of holes. So we could actually simplify this equation, which I'll do. We could simplify this. We could say that the conductivity of an intrinsic semiconductor is going to be equal to the number of intrinsic charge carriers times the fundamental charge 
that's the absolute value of the charge on electron, and it times the, uh, the sum of the electron mobility and the hole mobility. Okay. So there we go. That's our equation for the conductivity. And I'll just give you the, um, uh, the, the units here. This is, um, this is, uh, correction, this is, no, oops. Um, this is number per volume, okay, per cubic meter. This uh, fundamental charge, of course, has units of coulombs, and ability uh, is going to have units. It's going to have units of meters squared, no, not meter, no, meters squared uh, per volt second. And remember, volt is a joule per coulomb. <clears throat> All right, so that's an intrinsic semiconductor. Let's consider, um, as I hinted, what if what if we added something to it to change the properties? And so what we're going to do is we're going to make what we call an extrinsic uh, extrinsic semiconductor. So we need to add something to it so that the properties are dominated by that something that we add in. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say let's add a tiny little amount of uh, something that's got a different number of, uh, of electrons. So say we'll add some uh, phosphorus. Okay, well, well phosphorus has an atomic number or, or proton number of 15, right? So it's going to have that same electron configuration that we had for uh, silicon right up here, 3s2, 3p2, except plus one extra. So it's going to be 3s2, 3p3. All right, so that's going to be neon, 3s2, 3p3. It brings this extra electron, if you will. I mean, it's going to say extra because it's, it's in quotes. I'm saying extra relative to silicon. But it brings this extra electron to the table. And so what's going to happen is, um, let's see, I'm going to just copy uh, this for you. OK, I'm going to copy that, bring it down here. And <clears throat> we can use our, we can start with our, our um, silicon here. And what we're going to do is then we're going to say, okay, let's um, let's actually just replace this um, one of these. We're going to make a little point defect here, so we're going to actually replace one of these silicons with uh, phosphorus. Okay, so not that there's any significance to the uh, the color, but I'm going to make that phosphorus. And remember, phosphorus had five valence electrons, so it it would have contributed, say, these ones here for the bonds. But then it's still got one extra, okay? And that one extra is is it's it's shielded by these um, uh, core electrons. It's really weakly attracted. It's weakly bound. Or another way of looking at that is in terms of the band diagram. This is the valence band, this is the conduction band. The um, this this extra electron really is really close to being free. So it's got a, an energy that's kind of pr already pretty close to the conduction band. That is, you need a very small amount of energy to promote that electron and make it free. That is, um, and remember, what is this? This is phosphorus donating an electron. So we call that the donor level. That's the donor level. And what's it? Uh, lever. No, no, not the lever. Level. Donor level. That's the donor electron uh, energy level because phosphorus is donating an electron. And it uh, it's very close to the conduction band. So it can quite easily do it. And in fact, that means that there's going to be far more of these contributed or donated charge carriers than the intrinsic ones. And so the 
conductivity then, um, uh, correction, I don't know why I used, uh, okay, so it's supposed to be sigma, um, the extrinsic um, conductivity will, will be, you know, just a, um, it won't be influenced very much by the um, intrinsic properties that the contributed or donated electrons are going to dominate and so we can actually eliminate the contribution from the holes because there's very few holes the holes are just the intrinsically generated holes but we've got mostly the extrinsically contributed electrons so our equation for conductivity would just now involve the uh, electron mobility and similarly we could dope with um, oh, and so actually, so one one last thing is the charge carrier is is the electron, and the electron is negative. So we call this an n-type semiconductor. Okay, n-type. But you can imagine, in fact, if we if we doped with something doped just means we're adding to it. So what if we dope with boron? Well, boron has, uh, in fact, one less valence electron. It's got an atomic number of five. So its um, electron configuration is going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. It brings one less electron to the table. So boron would look uh, like this if I wanted to add it to this picture up here. What would boron do? I'll use the white color for boron. So if we doped with boron, well boron would only bring three electrons to the table, or to the bond, okay? Brings less to the relationship here, right? And so it leaves behind, essentially, what does it contribute? It contributes a hole. And so in that case, the charge carrier is going to be the hole, right? It's as if the char the hole is the one that's that's moving that exists. So the charge carrier is the hole, and in that case, we call that because the hole is positive. We call it a p-type semiconductor.